Hello folks, it's Sean, Victorian Piper. So after yesterday's video, when we finally got back to um, Plistil, Victorian town, back here again today, it's uh, coming up to six o'clock in the afternoon, so it's quietened down a bit. So I thought I'd do another uh, sneaky little video for you. So uh, while I'm here today, I've brought my old Peterson, looks the part, and I've got sort of odds and bods of um, tobaccos in this today. It's uh, literally any, all the odds and bods that I'm sure we all have, we all end up throwing in a jar. That's what I tend to bring with me here. Um, if nothing else, it's quite aromatic and doesn't bother too many people. So I thought I'd do a quick video on today. Again, I can't really operate the engine because I can't film myself doing it and doing the operations. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the boiler that provides the steam for the engine. Now, this boiler, you can just see it in the background, it's an old cast iron design. So you can see it's a cast iron cylinder. These riveted plates, that one there is actually known as a mud hole. It's an inspection hatch for the tubes that run through it. I'll switch the camera around in a minute. I'll show you a bit of the uh, sort of the features of the boiler and obviously the fire itself. And I'll uh, tell you what these are for and show you a diagram that explains it. Bear with me, let me just turn the camera around. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've swapped the camera around now so I can easy, more easily uh, swing around and show you bits and bobs. So this is the boiler itself then. It is quite a large vertical boiler. So if we start at the bottom, grab a glove because it's hot. This is the ash pan. So all the embers drop down into there. In fact, there you go, you can see some dropping through now. Because we're late in the day, the fire's now quite low. Um, so there'll be quite a bit of uh, ember dropping down. So whichever driver's on in the morning, it's their, one of their jobs will be to um, empty that out and dispose of it. Now I'm on earliest next week. So what I think I'll do next week, initially is, at least, is go through how we get this thing fired up and the jobs associated with it. Let's close that up. Okay, so here's just a hatch that we can view the fire through. It's also helpful when you've got fresh fuel on, if you open this up, it allows a little oxygen in above the fire and that helps reduce the smoke. So if we open up the door, Again, I need my glove because it's hot. And there we have the fire itself. Now, it's a fairly substantial uh, fire pit. You can't obviously really tell the depth. And if you look there, you'll see a tube running across the top. And that's basically how this boiler works. It's a jacket of water, same as most boilers. It's a jacketed boiler. But this one has tubes running through it. And there's a diagram on the wall that we show people. So you can see the tubes here. So there's a jacket of water with water with tubes full of water running through. The fire directly heats those tubes, which in turn heats the jacket. The boiling water creates some movement, and then obviously we trap the steam up in the top part here under pressure, which is obviously right up at the top there. Now these mud holes I was talking about, there's one, there's another, there's a variety around, uh, sort of dotted around the engine. They lead directly into the tube, so there we can take those apart when we need service, um, clean the tubes out and obviously put it all back together. That's a main inspection hatch at the top there. So obviously the important thing with a, a boiler is the fire that we've just seen. And of course my... Uh, Every stoker and engine man needs a coffee in this case. The most important thing then is the water level. So this is the water level gauge. Now, I don't think you're gonna make it out on the camera, but the water level, it's about three quarters full. And obviously there's a red zone at the bottom. That's more for our benefit so that we know if the water's running low, we need to get some in there pretty quick. If the boiler won't runs out of water, as you can imagine, that is not a good thing. Causes all sorts of trouble. We'd have to shut the whole thing down. It'd have to be stripped and checked to make sure nothing has buckled or um, come loose due to the excess heat with no water in it. Now, as a safety measure, there's a blow-off valve 
and that's linked to the pressure. Now if I try and reach up, you can see the pressure gauge up there. Now I've currently got around 75 pounds of steam pressure in this boiler. That's more than enough that I need to run the engine. The engine will run at anything from around 40 PSI. Um, just another quick one on the water gauge as well as another safety measure. So there's a blow off valve and that goes off again. Not sure you'll see. You might just be able to see the little red line. That's at 80 pounds. So the safety valve will open at 80 pounds of pressure and vent directly out through the ceiling. But as another backup safety measure, there's actually a lead plug inside the boiler, um, quite low down. It doesn't quite correspond to the level on that water gauge. But if the water gets too low, it'll expose the plug. The heat of the fire will melt the plug. Then what water remains will run through and douse the fire. Uh, at absolute worst, it at least dumps the excess steam pressure. It'll just blow off through the plug that's then gone. So if I just show you the plate there, this boiler isn't, as well, it's not Victorian. Obviously the majority of Victorian boilers of this style uh, are no longer serviceable. Um, so this one was built in 1959, so it is old. And it was one of the last of these cast iron riveted type boilers before they moved over to steel, which were more efficient uh, and easier to produce. Than these ones so this is one of the last ones so what i will also show you as we wander over here is this now this is a lovely old i can back up a bit so you can see it's a lovely old steam water pump now this does work and it is plumbed in to provide water to the boiler because for the operation of the boiler you need that balance between having enough steam pressure and obviously, if you've got a boiler full of water, you've got very little space left at the top for the steam. Um, although you can get the steam up to pressure pretty quickly that way, you'll very quickly exhaust that supply because there just isn't much there. Conversely, if you've got too little water, you've got a lot of room to store the steam, but we've got the problems I've just talked about, potentially melting the plug and having to shut the whole thing down. So we have to constantly top up with water as we use the steam and the water level drops, uh, we need to get more water in. Now to meet safety regulations, we do actually have an electric pump, but this old steam pump is rigged um, and plumbed in, runs up and over to actually supply water to the boiler, but we don't really use it. But what I will do, because all you've had is me talking about a boiler, is if you just give me a second I'll get that little pump running so you can at least see something steam driven going before we can get onto the good stuff um, in a few weeks time so again bear with me I'll be back in a second okay so I've just turned the steam turned the steam feed on which is right up at the top of the main boiler so the pump has now got steam going to it I've given it a little oil so now we'll get it running Okay, so you may struggle to hear me over the noise of that. I'll shut it off again in a minute. But for the amount of water it can pump to that huge boiler, we'd need to have this running pretty much constantly, which is another reason why we don't use it so much. So we can fire it up, as I've just shown you, uh, to show people when they come, come round. But generally it doesn't run and we'll use the electric pump. I'll just let that run for a second. Then I'll shut it down. And I think that'll be it for today.
So there we are then folks. That was a little bit about the boiler and uh, how we produce the steam. And then hopefully next week when I'm in early, I'll show you firing the thing up because it takes a bit of work to get it going. And I'll show you the prep of the engine. And depending how long it takes to get steam up, I might be able to show you it running um, on my own without, like I say, having someone else work the camera. But otherwise, have a good one. You all stay safe. And I'll see you again soon.